Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about all the books that I read in the month of May. In terms of reading, May has been a good month for me. I planned for 7 books and I completed 10 books. So even though the 10th book is a collection of mini short stories, it's less than 60 pages but I hope it counts. And without any delay, let's get into the first book. So the first book that I read was The Wrongful Death by Kenneth B. Anderson. I read this for the Right Reads blog tour. As you all know, this is the third book in the Great Devil War series. This is a middle grade fantasy book. The whole series is about this boy Philip who goes to hell and has his own adventures. So in the third book, Philip again goes to hell when his friend and the school bully Sam dies accidentally. So Philip holds himself responsible and he goes to hell in search of Sam. So in terms of plot, it is fast paced and once you get into the book, you really immersed in this world. The world building in this whole series is amazing. So it's always very captivating. In terms of character development, the book does a remarkable job. Every character that we follow from the first book has a definite character arc, be it big or small. So Philip himself starts as a young boy, an innocent boy, and he had such a plain and good heart when he was a kid. But with each experience, Philip is growing. He has different emotions and he as a teenager he is struggling to cope up with all that feelings with because of the experience that he had so that is one thing that i really like about this whole series uh, the only problem that i found was the book discusses a lot about philip and his father's relationship and i just couldn't buy into it uh, i get that he has a strained relationship and he doesn't know how to feel about it but it was mentioned a few times in the previous book as well, but this book really took it to the forefront. I know it's some kind of a foreshadowing for the upcoming books or some kind of, you know, stage set for the upcoming books. I don't know what is going to happen, but at the moment, I was really not interested into this story. So I really didn't care about that a particular relationship i just wanted to focus on the main adventure because philip was going to find his friend sam compared to that uh, this adventure was really short so i wanted more of that action and adventure instead of focusing on the relationship i'm sure it would make much sense in the upcoming books but right now i really felt that it was taking a lot of space in the story so overall i lo loved the book i enjoyed the book i rated it a four out of five so next book that I read was Harrow Lake by Cat Ellis. This is my first venture in paranormal fiction. I read it for a blog tour by The Right Reads. Again, Harrow Lake is the haunted town where Nolan Knox shot his first movie, The Night Jar. The movie then developed a cult uh, following it became a part of this village in the blog to someone i can't remember the name but uh, some blogger mentioned that this whole harrow lake can be in simple words described as the reversed version of stars hollow and given the fact that the main character's mother's name is lorelei i think it makes perfect sense i mean when i read that i really liked that whole concept because that is the simple way to describe this whole book to someone new it has the small town atmosphere only this one is not pleasant and joyful it is just eerie and spooky i get spooked easily so i don't know if you are a paranormal expert this might not be as spooky as you would like in case you are a beginner this is just the right amount to just scare you up but not too much that you lose your sleep even though i avoided reading it at night because it was just getting too scary for me the story is really good but towards the ending, a lot of those twists were left unsaid. I don't know if it's a conscious choice that was left open-ended for our interpretation or it was just those twists were just there to build up the suspense. I'm not sure. But other than that, I enjoyed the mystery and the ending of the book was really, really captivating. A surprise, very unexpected, I would say. So I enjoyed the book. I rated it a 4 out of 5. So after all the dark themes about death and hell and the spooky village, I needed something light and fluffy, which is why I read a YA contemporary romance book. I don't read a lot of YA books because if you know me, I am 31 and I'm well out of the genre, but 
I found that if I, if I pick the right books, I actually enjoy YA contemporary books. So I'm trying to read more of that. For this book, the main draw for me was uh, the protagonist is a book blogger. So being a book blogger myself, I would never leave a chance to read about bloggers. Hallie is a book blogger and she blogs under the name Kels. She pairs book covers with cupcakes. Her virtual best friend is Nash. Actually, her only best friend is Nash. So they are virtual best friends and they chat over Twitter almost every day. They talk about everything. But when Hallie moves to a new town, she meets Nash in person. So Nash doesn't know that Hallie is Kels. And in a moment of confusion and panic, Hallie doesn't tell him that she is Kels. So she tries to avoid him, she tries to stay away from him, but since they are like-minded people or something like that, she eventually falls for him and that is when things start to unravel. So the book really touches the topic of virtual anonymity and uh, the identity crisis that comes with it. That is one aspect I liked about the book, but at the same time, the ending didn't exactly justify that whole topic, at least I felt so. Or maybe it's because, you know, this is a YA book. I wish it focused on that a little bit more. Blogger life and the whole book dramas, the Twitter dramas, all was there and I could really relate to it. So all of that I enjoyed. But I, like I said, the main uh, core of the book is about this virtual uh, identity and how it affects your real life, uh, both in good and bad ways. So I wish it was more... On the forefront that was my one problem with the book other than that i enjoyed the book and i rated it a three and a half out of five it could have been a four bit if they gave that a little bit more importance anyway the next book i that i read is the bell for void by joy rogers so i got this book from the book tasters for review we follow a character called andy andy is a phd student in Voidology. Now, the void was discovered in the physics department of the Belfort University and at the time of its discovery, the void was fascinating discovery. People were expecting a lot of development in the field that it developed into its own branch called voidology. Decades later, when no progress was made in the research, the void essentially became a joke in the scientific community. But there are evil people who are still studying more about the void. And when they come to know about Andy, who has a superpower, they are after her to know more about the void. Overall, this was a fast-paced, thrilling story. I really enjoyed the scientific aspect of it. So being a physics, former physics student myself, I really enjoyed the whole physics lab and uh, physics department, the whole <laughs> dynamics there. I work in a completely unrelated field right now, but, but still the story took me back to my own memories, I should say. Overall, it's a good story, but I really didn't feel for the characters. It didn't move me or anything. I just felt detached the whole time. Maybe it was me not getting into the writing style. I don't know. But somehow I felt that it could have showed a little bit more emotion. It lacked that tenderness or, I don't know, some kind of pull, emotional pull for the reader to care about the characters or their fate. Other than that, it was a fast-paced adventure, action-filled book. So I rated it a 3 out of 5. So the next book is The Little Bookshop of Love Stories by Jamie Admins. So this is a cute love story with a bookish backdrop. If you can't tell, I love stories with a bookshop background. So we follow Hallie Winston. She is fired on a Monday and on the same day she wins a bookstore in the lottery. It's perhaps every book lover's dream. Running a bookshop is not exactly that easy and Hallie has to work really hard to keep the shop running. So it is about her learning about the shop, trying to save it, uh, with the help of uh, who should be a fan favorite, Dimitri. He is her companion in this whole journey and there is a very cute romance developing. So I loved the whole romance and uh, staying true to its name, the book talks uh, about love and joy of reading and what books mean to people. Uh, all that. So if you really enjoy uh, reading about the love of books, this is really a great start. 
but the final conflict of the book was just very cliched and was it necessary i don't know i mean it was some kind of conflict was necessary to give a closure to the whole story but i was not really convinced by the conflict it felt really inconsistent with the characters how they behaved and uh, how what happened in that particular situation was not exactly very consistent that was my main issue with the book otherwise i was loving the whole thing and in the end it was just like really so that was my problem with the book i had a great time reading this it was very positive and very uh, light hearted and you know very cute book and i rated it a 3 and a half out of 5 so again the next book is a uh, cute romance novel with a bookish backdrop did i tell you that i like a romance with a bookshop background yes i think i did sophie jones holds her whole life in her bookshop and alexander fletcher wants to buy out her shop for his family business so when two people are poles apart and they develop an interesting love story um it's a little hard to believe and that is my main issue with the book but i enjoyed the whole uh, quiet fishing village and the village folk coming together for a cause uh, all that aspect i really loved and even the romance was really pleasant to read but uh, just the way it started and how quickly it developed uh, and that kept bothering me the whole time the epilogue was really good i wish they focus more on the events that they explained in the epilogue if they showed a little bit more of that than what they focused on i really expected a hate to love story and the insta love kind of took me by surprise and yeah it was really a one time read for me uh, i rated it a 3 out of 5 moving on the next book is wild at heart by k a tucker This is the sequel to The Simple Wild by Kay Tucker. And in Simple Wild we follow Kala who lives in Toronto and she uh, comes to Alaska to reconcile with her father. And there she meets a bush pilot Jonah and uh, it's a hate to love relationship. This book picks up from where the first book stopped. So instead of just ending at the happily ever after the writer actually shows us how hard it is to get your happily ever after because this book is all about kala moving back to alaska in a more permanent setup and uh, finding her own place in the alaskan life the main message of the book is you know even though you have this perfect love story in front of you perfect relationship in front of you no matter how perfect it is you just have to find something of your own and only then that will make you happy you know you are responsible for your own happiness not someone else that was the main takeaway from this book and i loved it i rated it a 5 out of 5 so if you love the alaskan landscape and the kind of way of life and a good love story these two books are must reads i would highly recommend both these books i love both of them so the next book is their sense of perfection by nita brooks uh, in my tbr video i mentioned that i requested this book from nick galley thinking that it is a thriller book i don't know why i thought that <laughs> but this is a contemporary fiction book and it was quite unexpected for me because i didn't expect to love this book as much as i did we follow nicola king who is an excellent fragrance maker nicolas bucket list gets out accidentally and she is forced to pursue her bucket list so being a cautious person nicola never planned on doing any of those things in her list but as she attempts to do those things she finds more about herself she connects with people whom she didn't expect to connect the book it focuses more on family relationships burden of expectations living up to your name those kinds of things the things that you are dealing with in your 30s there was a romance but it was very grounded and once people get around the 30s it's really hard to accommodate another person into your life so the book really highlights that and i like that they addressed all those things so i really love this book the only complaint i might have is that nicola is too loyal to her own fault 
and not it doesn't take away anything from the story but sometimes you think okay just can't you see that was one thing that i really felt frustrated at some point other than that i really enjoyed the book i rated it a 5 out of 5 so if you want to read a book about moving out of your comfort zone finding your own self this might be a good pick so the next book that i read is the guest list by lucy foley This book was hyped so much around the bookish community that I moved out of my TBI plans and read this. So I'm happy I read this because it takes it is a very suspenseful thriller. The story takes place in a remote island where a wedding is being hosted and suddenly someone is murdered on the day of the wedding and every guests are trapped in this island. So someone in this whole wedding party died and someone else killed them. We don't know the X and we don't know the Y. With two unknown factors and narrated by multiple characters and in different timelines, it really is an interesting read. But unfortunately for me, after a certain point, I kind of knew that who was going to be killed and who exactly did it, and I really hoped it did it didn't go the way I expected. I wanted the book to surprise me, but it didn't. It actually went exactly how I thought it would. That just happened to me if you cannot guess that you would probably love this book i hope that doesn't happen to you if you're reading this because otherwise it has very intriguing characters it is very atmospheric everyone has their own secrets if it just kept you guessing it would have met its purpose but it really didn't do that for me so i rated it a 3 and a half out of 5 it was still a great read the last book that i read is Marjara Naidi by N Mrudula this is a Malayalam book that i got as a review copy i don't read a lot of books in my mother tongue because they are usually very hard hitting books and i really am not ready for that i read to escape and i'm not ashamed to admit that i like reading light light hearted books generally i don't read a lot of books in my own language but this was a very short book it less than 60 pages and i was asked to review it so i thought okay why not give it a try because it is short stories and surprisingly i really like the short stories most of the stories were really beautiful the language was very poetic and i think it's just happens when you read in your own language right the writer really told a lot of things using a very few words that was the one thing i really was fascinated in by this book Not all the stories were my favorite. Uh, I liked a few. I didn't like a few. So if you want a detailed review of every short story in there, you can read my blog. To be honest, it would take almost the same time to finish the book and finish reading my review. I would say if you know the language, just give it a go. So I rated this a four out of five. So those are all the books that I've read in the month of May. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have read any of these books. Let me know in the comments and if you want to read any of these books please share your thoughts in the comment section and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more bookish updates and discussions i will see you in my next video thank you for watching bye